Welcome back, Yadamus here, and today we're going to be taking a look at a couple of interesting weapons that I really find very, very useful. Now, if you're anything like me, you grabbed this weapon from the Warbond package and thought, okay, this is going to be the best weapon all time. I'm not going to ever need to replace this. Well, the other day I got this weapon, and in comparison, it seems pretty good, and it will give the Breaker a run for its money. So today, I definitely want to test these two out and see which does it better. Now, this isn't to say that any other weapon in the game isn't viable, because they definitely have their use cases, and, you know, everyone has their own personal preference, so keep in mind, this is completely my opinion as far as these two weapons go, but I wanted to test them out and see which one ultimately that I liked better. So, hope you find this helpful, but let's get right into it. First up, let's take a look at stats here. So, this is going to be the on-paper stats that the weapon displays. So, if we're looking at the breaker first, we have 330 damage, a 16 capacity, a 30 recoil, and 300 fire rate. Now, the weapon traits have light armor penetrating. So, that is the stats of the Breaker. Next, we have the Scorcher. So, taking a look at these stats here, we have 100 damage, a 15 capacity, 20 recoil, and 250 fire rate. The weapon traits for this are light armor penetrating and explosive. Now, looking at both of these two in comparison, that seems to be that the Scorcher would be much worse. Now, when I've used both of these, I don't feel like the stats here on paper are exactly accurate, or the explosive factor of the Scorcher has much more impact than it must seem on most other weapons, just because the Scorcher does quite a lot of damage when I've used it previously. So, as far as the actual paper stats, I don't know how accurate these are, just in comparison. So, taking a look at both of these, I would say that to take those numbers with a grain of salt, obviously the breaker has one more in the capacity as far as the magazine goes, so that is a plus for that, but I mean, magazine isn't the only be all end all for comparing the two. So we're definitely gonna have to take a look at damage and see how the two fare. Side edit, I did most of the levels on nine, but there was one that was eight that got in there on accident. It should be pretty similar as far as the health goes, as from what I understand, they don't increase the health per difficulty, mostly just the quantity, so it should be pretty accurate. Also, I didn't do this test on small enemies, as most of the time it only takes one to two shots to take them down, so I figured the information wasn't very helpful. All right, so one of the first things I wanted to try was how fast can you unload the magazine, and then how fast can it reload on an empty mag, and then how fast can it reload on a partially emptied mag? Because I do know that there has been a difference with that uh, when you're reloading partial versus an empty. So we'll go ahead and test that now. So this is going to be the unloading of the weapon. Okay. And then we'll see empty magazine here. All right. And then we'll go this way so we don't get hit by these guys. And then we'll do a partial magazine here. Okay, that didn't seem too much faster. We'll definitely get a timer to see if there's any difference in speed, but so far it didn't look like there was a partial mag bonus as far as reloading there, but we'll definitely get a timer and see exactly how much time it took. Next up, we have the breaker. So we're gonna do the same thing here. We're going to see how fast it unloads and if there's a difference between an empty magazine and a partially emptied magazine. So let's try it. Okay, empty. Okay, that was decently quick. Okay, here's a partial. Mm, seemed much faster, to be honest. I didn't notice too much of a difference with the Scorcher, but this one seemed to put off a much bigger difference. But again, we'll get a timer going and we'll see how long it took each and compare the two of them. But that is the breaker. Next, I wanted to test how fast each of these can unload a magazine. So here we have the plasma and that one is going to be finishing at 325 and the breaker at 359. So the breaker unloads a little bit slower but that could be in your favor. Now, obviously the plasma is a semi-automatic, so that is going to depend on how fast you can hit that trigger. Uh, so that will change per person. That's not exact timing, but that was just my example. And then the breaker, I just held it down. So that's gonna be the average for most people on the breaker if you're just holding the fire button. But as far as things go, I mean, it doesn't really make too much of a difference whether or not you're trying to unload it as fast as possible or not, but I just wanted to see how fast you could actually get a magazine out in case you needed to. Um, now, this is going to be more of like a you need to get out of somewhere quickly kind of area, or you need to take down something quickly. As far as just like a big enemy or something like that, you want to take it out fast. 
and this is how fast you'd be able to unload the entire magazine on said enemy. Next, I wanted to test reload on an empty magazine. Now, this is the reload when the ammo becomes available. So as soon as the magazine bar fills back to white from red, that was what I was trying to test. So it looks like the Scorcher ended at 236, which is 2 seconds and 36 milliseconds, and then the Breaker ended at 2 seconds and 45 milliseconds. So as far as the time goes here, that is a difference. Now, it's not a big difference, but as far as that goes, that could be the difference in terms of when you're getting swarmed by bugs between you living and you dying. So keep that in mind when you're using these two weapons and comparing the two as far as which one you want to use. Now next, we'll test as far as the partial mag reload because that does have a difference on certain weapons and we'll definitely compare the two now. Next, I wanted to test a partial reload, so shooting a few shots and then attempting a reload afterwards. Now, it looks like the plasma does not not benefit from this even though it was a few milliseconds off i think that was just kind of more of a timing thing um but it doesn't look like it benefits from the actual partial reload itself whereas the breaker has a major difference it's almost an entire second of a difference now i do understand as far as the plasma that there's nothing really to like talk back as far as the weapon or anything like that whereas the breaker does have something like that so as far as mechanics go it looks like the plasma is going to be the same whether it's an empty magazine or a partial reload on the magazine to whereas the breaker is going to be a massive difference like i said it's going to be an entire second almost worth of time and so when you're considering using these weapons that's something to take into consideration as like i said that could definitely be the difference as far as you know tight situations or you're getting crowded so that's something to keep in mind when you're choosing your weapon here as there is definitely a difference all right so i want to test how fast this can take down a charger with the method that most people seem to use which is take out the leg and then shoot the under squishy part afterwards so let's try it Okay, so the leg's exposed, now we have the breaker, and this is going to be a close weapon, so let's see. So about four shots. Four shots and he was down. So if we're using the breaker in optimal range, which is close because it's a shotgun, uh, then four shots seems to do the trick. Now, obviously, you know, you're not always going to be able to get that perfect situation. I was using the EMS, so that made it much easier, but... I mean, if you get ideal shots when you're doing that, that's four underneath the armor there. So not bad in comparison. So now we have a charger with the scorcher here. So we're going to take off that leg. OK, let's see. One, two, three, four. OK, so same use case Four shots. Both take it down equally as quick in the same circumstance of having the railgun take off the armor and take him down. Now, it might change depending on the heavy weapon, but I mean, I would say the railgun's probably the most popular right now for taking things down like that, as far as armor, um, in my opinion, at least. I mean, from what I've seen. The one, the one good thing I will say is that the Scorcher is able to do this at range, whereas the Breaker does need to be a little bit closer just because it is a shotgun. So keep that in mind as well, that it will still most likely be able to do that at a longer distance just because it is more of a precision weapon and can do so at longer distances with full damage. Next, I wanted to try to see how much it would take to kill a Hulk. Now, this is going to be with the Breaker. So we had to use the EMS to get behind this guy because otherwise there was just no way this was going to happen. But uh, we got in there. Um, and for this, it looks like if you hit him in the back, it does take around five shots. So I thought it was six originally, but it looks like it's going to be five. So, I mean, maybe six if you take into account the fact that after five, he was in kind of like a, a limp state to where he, he couldn't really do anything. And he was kind of just on the edge of, you know, exploding. So, I mean, five technically to put him in that state, six would have definitely finished him off without being in this state. But I mean, five to six, not bad. That's pretty decent as far as a weapon goes. And honestly, that's that's pretty good. I, I didn't test this as far as like a tank because from what I tried, it didn't seem like this was getting through to the tank even on the vents. So I didn't really use this on the tank, but I mean, it's pretty good on a Hulk. So, I mean, considering if you can get that shot, five to six is not bad considering. And that's like about a third of the mag. So yeah. All right, next we're gonna be testing this on a Hulk to see how many shots it can do this enemy in with the Scorcher. So we'll get behind him here. We have one, two, three, four, five. So similar thing. So about five or six, if we do another shot there, um, it doesn't seem like it's really gonna do too much. I mean, I think he was down after five or six. So it seems like it's similar in, in terms of the breaker. 
So not too much of a difference as far as taking down some of the heavier enemies, such as Chargers and Hulks. Uh, like I said before, I don't think this can actually do anything to the Bio Titan or the uh, tanks in my experience. Maybe the lighter versions of tanks, but I mean, realistically, if you're fighting a tank, you're probably going to be using a support weapon anyways. So it's not really too informative to really test against that. But yeah, so far, uh, both of them were able to take down a Hulk in about five to six shots. So about the same there, too. Also, these bio spewers, usually they give you a lot of grief. They take a lot of shots. Like, I mean, they're pretty tanky. Like, even even close, they're pretty tanky. Like, that, that took almost my entire magazine to shoot. To whereas the Scorcher is going to be a lot quicker. The Scorcher versus the bio spewer. It's much quicker. One thing the Scorcher does really poorly in is crowd control, especially when something's close to you. If you try to shoot something close to you, you're going to end up getting killed. So, like, say one of these guys is on your back, or, you know, something else is going to be on top of you, like a hunter, or something like that, where you're going to actually, you know, have to shoot them and take them off of you. You're going to have to swap to your secondary, because if you don't, and you do shoot with this gun, then it is going to kill you. And I can just walk up to something here to kind of give you that idea. So, this guy's on me, right? Boom. Immediately killed by the explosion. It didn't really even kill him, so... <laughs> It's less beneficial for you than it is anybody else, really. So that, that's one negative about the Plasma as well. One of the benefits of the Plasma Scorcher is that it is actually able to take down these at, -AT enemies from the front. So the splash damage from the actual weapon does go through that. So if you hit them in the front there, it will take them out in two shots, which is great. That's a really good pro for the Plasma Scorcher. As I mentioned earlier, this is not the case with the Breaker. You do have to go around behind them and actually take them out from the pilot side and you can't get through that armor. Now, some cases you can shoot above it, but I mean, you're not always gonna have that opportunity. So that is one thing with the Scorcher that is a nice benefit, is you're able to actually shoot through it, whether it's, you know, with the splash damage or what have you. Still a nice perk, for sure. One of my favorite positives of the Plasma Scorcher is that it can hit Spore Spewers from a really, really far distance, to whereas the Breaker can just not do that. So we can see the Spore Spear over there in the distance. We could hit that from here. So, we can stop getting harassed for a second. There we go. See? It can definitely hit that from super, super far away. Even the railgun doesn't hit it usually that well. And it's it's going to be a lot harder to use the railgun um, as it takes, you know, every reload, every shot. And it's it's not, not as great. So, that's one really big boon of the Scorcher that I've really been enjoying. Especially when you know you're heading towards that direction for an objective, and you can just take that out, you know, from insanely far away. So it's super helpful to be proactive about it. Pretty far distance for the breaker. So you can definitely hit it. But it's going to take you a lot more shots from this distance. And, I mean, who just wants to go shooting that far, you know what I mean? So, I mean, could it technically do so? Yeah, sure. But, I mean, it's going to take you a lot of shots. I mean, we're almost three home mags deep. At the same distance that the other one did. And it's still not down. Yeah, I mean, it, it's definitely going to be able to do it. But you're definitely going to want to be closer. And that's where the uh, Scorcher shines a little bit more. So it's not that it necessarily can't do it, but it probably shouldn't do it. Um, you're going to waste a lot of ammo trying. If you find yourself in a situation where you're dealing with a lot of these guys, the Breaker's going to be the one that's going to be able to get you out of this situation, as opposed to the Scorcher. Because you can just start going, and you'll start taking them down. Obviously exclude the Charger. But if you just keep going... You're eventually going to take them out. And as long as there's not any big enemies there, you're most likely going to get out of that situation. Now, the Plasma Scorcher in that situation would have gotten you instantly killed because of the explosion splash damage. So that's one thing about the Plasma Scorcher that the Breaker can do better uh, as far as that goes. The Scorcher can't do that without immediately killing you. So keep that in mind as well, especially when you're doing bugs, because uh, uh, getting swarmed by hunters is a pretty common occurrence. All right, so final thoughts on the Scorcher versus the Breaker. Now, 
To premise, these are two completely different weapons. The Breaker is more of a close range shotgun that's definitely gets you out of crowd situations, and the Scorcher is definitely going to be more of an accuracy type thing where you're going to be able to hit things from long ranges and things like that. The reason I wanted to compare the two was because in my experience so far, both of these guns have been the only two in comparison in the game that I've personally used that I feel like could technically do pretty much everything you would need on both the automaton side and bug side. So obviously they both have their pros and cons. Um, one thing I forgot to mention about the plasma scorcher is that uh, those little shrimp guy enemies on the bug side, the ones that usually sit in their little armor if you try to shoot them from the front, that can also penetrate with the scorcher, uh, just like it did with the ATAT on the automaton side. The breaker again cannot do that. Uh, as far as testing goes and so that again is another plus to that however again the breaker is definitely going to be better for your crowd control situations so for that exact reason you're gonna see it excel more in bugs and then you're gonna see the scorcher excel a little bit more in bots as it's a precision weapon so you're gonna be able to take out the heads of the robots which is their weak spot uh, from longer distances and things like that so they do have both of their advantages and disadvantages i would say overall I still like the Breaker a little bit more than I do like the Scorcher, but the uh, the Scorcher is a very good sigh of relief in terms of a different gun, because everything else so far hasn't really felt like I really wanted to use it outside of the Breaker, but this gun really gave me a good idea of what it could be, you know, if they started balancing some of the other weapons and kind of bringing them up to the other levels uh, as far as, like, these two weapons go. Now, again, this is completely my opinion as far as both of these weapons go, but hopefully this was helpful as far as kind of when you're taking a look at both these guns and deciding whether or not you want to use one or the other. But overall, again, I think they're pretty much about the same, and they, but like I said, they both have different use cases, but as far as overall power i think they're both pretty good options um like i said my personal preference would probably be overall the breaker but the scorcher does it pretty good as well overall again thank you guys so much for making it this far in the video i appreciate you uh this testing was very fun and i had a good time so i hope you got some benefit out of this video as well if you did go ahead and give the video a like and if you like i will be putting out more content like this so if you want you can subscribe as well to see more things like this otherwise Leave a comment and uh, let me know what you guys think about this or if there's anything I forgot and that you would like to see in another video. Thanks, and I'll see you in the next one.